Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing transcription factors. Okay, so we're in the process of discussing um, why it is that transcription factors bind to the major groove of DNA duplexes. Okay, and the answer is that if we want a transcription factor to be able to bind to a specific recognition sequence, i.e. a specific sequence of organic bases, then it needs to be able to actually have recognize some difference between uh, the different organic base pairs, basically. Okay, and if it was to bind to the minor groove, the difference is that it sees on trivial, basically. It's not going to actually be able to recognize a difference between the different organic base pairs. Uh, and this is because the only way that the transcription factors generally bind to the DNA is through hydrogen bonds and hydrophobic interactions. And we'll see that the sides of the organic base pairs which face into the minor groove have pretty much the same um, potential for forming hydrogen bonds uh, and hydrophobic interactions, no matter which uh, organic base pair you have there, okay, whereas the major groove, it's quite different, basically, okay, so that's why transcription factors need to bind to the major groove, so let's now actually demonstrate this by drawing the different types of organic base pair um, that are present within DNA. Okay, so we'll start by drawing, um, well, by discussing the structures that we're going to have within the different organic bases. Okay, so we'll start by discussing what a pyrimidine ring is. Okay, uh, so two of the organic bases, aden sorry, not adenine, cytosine and thymine are pyrimidines. Okay, so their main structure focuses on a pyrimidine ring. So, in order to discuss what a pyrimidine ring is, we need to firstly discuss what a benzene ring is. So, I'm now going to draw you a skeletal formula of a benzene ring. So, remember, in skeletal formulae, uh, we don't show carbon atoms. They are implicitly shown by uh, corners. Okay, and we don't show hydrogen atoms coming off carbon atoms. When you have a missing bond coming off a carbon atom, it's implicitly understood that that is to a hydrogen atom. Okay, so... In benzene, then, we have six carbons, like so, in a ring, where we have alternating double and single bonds between these carbon atoms, and then off every single one of these six carbon atoms, you then have a hydrogen atom. Okay, so this is the structure of a benzene ring. Now, to convert a benzene ring into a pyrimidine ring, what we are going to do is take two of the carbons out of the benzene ring, specifically these ones that I'm now circling in green, this one here and this one here. We're going to take those carbon atoms out of the benzene ring, and we're going to replace them with nitrogen atoms. Now, each of these carbon atoms has a hydrogen atom coming off it in addition to the free bonds that it's got within this ring. Okay, now when we replace them with nitrogens, Nitrogen doesn't need four bonds, it only needs three bonds, so it's not going to have those hydrogens coming off um, that the carbon atoms would have had in the uh, benzene ring structure. Okay, so this then now is the structure of a pyrimidine ring. We've got uh, alternating double and single bonds still, but now we've got four carbon atoms, each with a hydrogen off them in addition to being in the ring, and then two nitrogen atoms. Okay, so this here, this is the structure of a pyrimidine ring. Okay, now, two of our organic bases are going to be pyrimidines. They're going to have their structure completely based on this pyrimidine ring. Okay, right. So, we'll start now by uh, drawing out those, um, the structures of those two pyrimidines. So, the two pyrimidines are thymine and cytosine. Okay, so let's now draw out the structure of uh, thymine and cytosine. So, we'll start off with thymine. So, we'll start off then by drawing the pyrimidine ring structure. Okay, but in the thymine molecule, you're not actually going to have the full pyrimidine ring because uh, some of these double bonds are going to be broken, basically. 
Okay, so I'll show you this. So if we're drawing thymine now, which, uh, by the way, I've abbreviated to T there, but this is short for thymine, okay, here is the structure of thymine. So I'll try and keep it as analogous uh, to uh, this pyrimidine ring as possible. Okay, so here is our thymine ring. Okay, right. Now, um, off one of these nitrogens, you're now going to have hydrogen, okay? So we'll have this nitrogen here having a hydrogen coming off it, okay? Uh, and that double bond that uh, would have been here has gone now. And the reason is that this carbon is now going to have a double bond to an oxygen atom here instead. So we have broken the second of the two bonds within this double bond between this carbon and this nitrogen atom. Okay, and that means that we've had to put a hydrogen onto this nitrogen, and we've also taken the hydrogen off the carbon that was here and put a double bond to an oxygen atom there instead. Okay, we're also going to do the same to this double bond here. We're going to break the double bond, and we're going to put a oxygen coming off this carbon here, double bound to it, and then a hydrogen off this nitrogen here. Okay, so that double bond's gone as well. Um, the only double bond then that survives is this double bond down here. So this one survives. And then finally, to finish the structure off, you're going to replace the hydrogen that came off this carbon by a methyl group here. Okay, so that then is the structure of thymine. Now let's discuss the structure of cytosine. Cytosine, cytosine is slightly simpler than thymine. Okay. It's still based on the um, pyrimidine ring structure, okay? So, once again, I'll draw out the six-membered ring, keeping the different atoms in the same relative positions as they were in the pyrimidine ring up there, okay? So here is our six-membered ring with four carbon atoms and two nitrogen atoms. Okay, we then have a hydrogen coming off this nitrogen because, again, we've done this trick of breaking the second of those two bonds uh, within that double bond here and then putting an oxygen double bound to this carbon, taking the hydrogen off that carbon and putting a hydrogen onto this nitrogen. Okay, uh, so that's that double bond gone. Okay. The difference between cytosine and thymine, which is what makes cytosine slightly nicer uh, to remember, is that this double bond here is still uh, present in cytosine, okay? And then this double bond is also going to be present. Uh, then, in cytosine, what you have is an amino group coming off this carbon up here. Okay, right. So this is the structure then of cytosine, and this is the structure of thymine. And these two organic bases are collectively known as the pyrimidine organic bases. Okay, so we'll come back to those in a moment. Now we want to discuss the other organic bases, which are the purines. Now these are going to contain a larger structure, which is known as a purine ring. But in fact, a purine ring is a little bit of a misnomer because it actually contains multiple rings. It contains two rings, and one of the rings is our old friend, the pyrimidine ring. So let's now draw this. So, uh, we'll start off with a pyrimidine ring, for it's still going to be present in the purine ring. Okay, so here is this six-membered pyrimidine ring here. Okay, with alternating double and single bonds. Now, the difference between uh, the purine ring and the pyrimidine ring is that you're now going to add on a second ring here, which is going to be called an imidazole ring. Okay, so... We have two nitrogen atoms coming off these two carbon atoms here. We then have a double bond between this nitrogen atom and a carbon atom up here, and then a single bond between this nitrogen atom and this carbon atom. And then finally, we have a hydrogen coming off that nitrogen there. Okay, so this second ring structure that we have within the structure of a purine, okay, this structure that I'm highlighting now in purple here, where we have three carbon atoms, two down here with a double bond between them, one up here, okay, and then two nitrogen atoms, one here and one here, okay, with that double bond between that nitrogen atom and that carbon atom there, this is known as an imidazole ring, 
Okay, right. And the reason it's called that is that when you have a double bond between a nitrogen atom and a carbon atom, which indeed we do have within this ring structure, that double bond between a nitrogen atom and a carbon atom is known as an imide bond. Okay, so that's why the entire ring is called an imidazole ring. So when you join an imidazole ring uh, with a pure, uh, sorry, with a pyrimidine ring here, the result is that you get a purine ring. So the whole thing is called a purine ring. Okay, so now let's talk about the specific examples of purine rings uh, that we have, okay, which are uh, guanine and cytosine. Uh, sorry, not guanine and cytosine, guanine and adenine. Okay, so the purine organic bases that are present within DNA are the two organic bases, guanine and adenine. Okay, right. So we'll start off by drawing guanine and then we'll draw uh, adenine. Okay, and remember, guanine always pairs with cytosine in DNA and uh, adenine always pairs with thymine. So starting with guanine then. Okay, so we'll start by drawing the purine ring structure out because actually you're not going to modify that much of the purine structure to uh, get to uh, guanine. Okay, so we'll try and keep this as analogous as possible again, so I'll draw it in exactly the same orientation once again. Okay, so here is our uh, pyrimidine ring, and notice I'm not drawing that double bond there because that double bond bond is not going to uh, be in guanine, okay, as we'll see in a moment. So here is the imidazole ring coming down here, the two nitrogens, that imide bond between this nitrogen and this carbon atom, and the single bond between this nitrogen and that carbon atom, and now this double, the second of the two bonds in this double bond here has been broken, and we've now got a double bond coming off this carbon once again to an oxygen, okay, so this same old trick of taking the hydrogen off that carbon, breaking the second of the two double bonds, putting an oxygen onto this carbon, and then putting a hydrogen onto the nitrogen, we've done that again, basically. Okay, finally, also to complete up guanine, off this carbon here, instead of having a hydrogen coming off there, we're going to have an amino group. Okay, and that will create the organic base guanine. Okay, then finally, the organic base adenine. The organic base adenine, once again, is slightly simpler. Okay, so we've started twice with the more complicated one. Okay, we started with thymine the first time, and we started with guanine this time. So now we'll do adenine. So adenine, again, is a purine organic base. So I'll start by drawing the basic structure. Now, in fact, adenine is going to have the purine structure completely intact, okay? So all of the double bonds are going to be there still. Okay, so here is our pyrimidine ring completely intact. Here is our midazole ring, which is still, again, completely intact. Okay, like so. Here is that imide bond after which the ring is named, and then what's special about adenine is that off this carbon you've taken off the hydrogen that was coming off there, and you're going to have an amino group coming off there. Okay, so this is the structure then of adenine, and I missed the hydrogen coming off that nitrogen there in the structure of guanine. Okay, so here is adenine over here. Right, okay, so uh, what we now want to do is draw the structure of these nucleotide pairs. So we want to draw adenine paired with thymine and guanine paired with cytosine to see how um, you're going to have different potentials for producing hydrogen bonds and producing hydrophobic interactions on the um, major groove sides with the different uh, base pairs, but not on the minor groove sides. Okay, right. Uh, so, the first thing that I want to say is how the organic bases are actually going to link up to ribose sugars. Okay, they're going to link up to ribose sugars via these bonds that all of them have to hydrogen atoms at the moment. So, absolutely every single one of these organic bases at present is linked to a hydrogen atom. 
Okay, we are going to take that hydrogen atom off these nitrogen atoms, and we are going to bind that nitrogen atom instead to the first carbon of the deoxyribose sugar within DNA. Okay, so that's how we bind these organic bases to DNA. So, let's now have a look at the organic base pairs paired together. Okay, right. So, we're going to start off with cytosine paired with guanine. Okay, so we'll start off with a C-G pair. So, we'll start off then with drawing cytosine on this side and then guanine on the other side. But you could draw them the other way around. It will effectively be the same structure, just rotated. You know, pick the structure out, drop it back down, flip it over, drop it back down. That's the other way around, a guanine paired to a cytosine. Okay, uh, so we'll draw it the way around, cytosine paired with guanine. Okay, so we'll start off by drawing our um, pyrimidine organic base, cytosine. Now, unfortunately, it's going to change in orientation compared to how I drew it over the pre previous page. So that's not ideal, but I can't really help that. Okay, so um, we're going to flip the pyrimidine ring round a bit. Okay, so here is our pyrimidine ring. Okay, here is the second of the two nitrogens, then we've got four carbons here. So hopefully you can appreciate that that's the pyrimidine ring. One, two, three, four carbons with two nitrogen atoms. Okay, then up here we have that carbon double bound to the oxygen atom. Okay, and unfortunately we don't have them on the same page, which is kind of annoying. That's the carbon double bound to the oxygen atom here. Okay, so we've flipped it around. This nitrogen is the one that's going to be binding to the ribose sugar. Okay, so I'll just draw this as a square here. In fact, probably I should draw it as a pentagon at least. Okay, so here is our deoxyribose sugar over here. Okay, uh, then we are going to have some double bonds in this structure. We're going to have a double bond here and a double bond here as well. Okay, then... Uh, this carbon up here is going to have an amino group coming off, and I'll draw this like so. So here's the amino group of um, the cytosine organic base. So that now finishes that structure. Okay, now I'm just going to highlight different bits up so that we can analyze, uh, well, so that we can compare it to our previous structure so that I can convince you that this is the same structure. So here are the two nitrogens in pink. There's the carbon with the double bond to the oxygen in blue, and then the carbon with the amino group is in turquoise. Okay, let's go over the page. Here we have the two nitrogens in pink. Okay, here we have um, the carbon atom double bound to the oxygen in blue, and here is the carbon double bo well, bound to the amino group in turquoise. Okay, so I hope I've convinced you that that is the same structure now. Okay, so it's going to now be bound to um, a guanine organic base. Okay, now again, the orientation of guanine is now going to completely change as well. Okay, so we're going to start off by drawing the pyrimidine ring, but I'm going to draw it in a completely different orientation to what I drew previously. Okay, so here are the two nitrogens of the pyrimidine ring here. Okay, we've then got the four carbons of the pyrimidine ring, like so. Okay, we've then got our imidazole ring coming off up here with these two nitrogens, like so. Then the double bond to the carbon atom, so there's the imide bond, and then here's the single bond to this nitrogen atom. And then this will be bound to another uh, ribose sugar here, okay, uh, that will be going, that will be oriented in the anti-parallel direction, and I am just going to show this as a square. Okay, so this is, ref this, you know, is reminiscent of my discussion of the fact that the um, sugar phosphate backbones are not sitting in a straight line like this. They're both coming off in the same direction, and this is the origin of the major and minor grooves within DNA. Okay, right. Let's now put some double bonds on here. So we have a double bond here. We also have a double bond here. Uh, but we will not have a double bond here, and that's because we have broken that double bond there to create a double bond to an oxygen atom, okay? And then um, we've got an amino group coming off down here, 
Okay, so this one is slightly simpler to understand how we've got that from the previous picture because actually all we've done is rotate it round. If I rotated it back round to there, uh, that's uh, the same picture that I drew previously. Okay, um, where is it? Here. Okay, so hopefully that one's easier to understand how I've gone from that to that.